Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review of the Sadie S1 dashboard camera. You will receive the dashboard camera, suction cup mount with integrated GPS unit, a cigarette lighter adapter with 12 foot cable, 40 inch mini USB cable, a mini driver CD, a CPL filter for the camera lens, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, and a user manual. This dashboard camera is quite compact and measures 3 and 3 quarter inches by 1 and 3 quarter inches and 1 and a quarter inch thick, inclusive of the lens. Along the top, you have the menu button, power button, dock contacts for the mount, mode button, and record key. On the right hand side is the slot for the micro SD card. On the bottom is the mini USB charging port, mini HDMI output port, and microphone. And on the left side are the up and down keys for the navigation menus. The screen on the back has a 2.5 inch diagonal, and on the front, next to the lens is the built-in speaker and reset button. The CPL filter is optional and can be installed on the lens to help reduce glare, darken bright skies, and cut down on reflections. Simply screw it onto the lens like so. The driver CD simply has the playback software and video codec installation file. However, you don't really need it because when you format the micro SD card in the camera, it will load the same software onto the card. The camera attaches to the mount by sliding the contact pins into the slot on the top of the camera. On the back of the suction cup is the GPS receiver, which is integrated and cannot be removed. In order to use the GPS, you must plug the power cable into the USB port on the GPS unit. If you don't want to use the GPS features like location and speed tracking, you can plug the power cable directly into the port on the bottom of the camera instead. When attaching the suction cup to your windshield, make sure the GPS is in the unlocked position facing to the left. Then press the suction cup against the glass and rotate the GPS clockwise into the locked position. This should provide a firm hold. The camera sits on a ball joint so you can rotate and point the camera where you want it, but it will also stay there without moving around when you let go. The camera has a number of different resolutions, and all of them are HD. The highest resolution is 2560 by 1080 p This is super wide angle at 170 degrees. The lower resolutions have tighter fields of view. However, my preferred setting is the normal widescreen 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. The extra FPS over the typical 30 makes the video smoother and clearer. It's so clear that you can read the license plates on cars in lanes to your left and right in the recorded footage, provided you're close enough. During the day, the video quality is high def and captures a lot of detail. Check out that flock of birds in the distance. The road signs are also quite clear. At night, the video is a bit harder to see, but the night vision is actually not that bad, and you can see enough detail in the footage that it could be helpful in the event of an accident. The only problem I had was with the software that the camera loaded to the card. For me, it played with an inverted image and kept crashing due to a script error. I ended up downloading a different player called Registrator Viewer, which worked for me. The player can show you a map of your travels, shows you driving speed, direction of travel, and G-sensor information during your trip. Overall, the camera is easy to set up and install. It captures clear, high-def video for a better value than you might typically get from other dashboard cameras in its price range. It has some of the highest video quality that I've seen for a unit this size, and has other features like G-sensor detection, motion detection, and lane deviation alerts. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.